I'm Polly Toynbee. I'm a social and political commentator for The Guardian newspaper in London. We always look at Swedish politics with great care from Britain, particularly those of us who are on the centre-left of politics. The Nordic countries, perhaps particularly Sweden, feel very close to Britain's Labour Party, and I'm a, essentially a centre-left writer. And so we look at, looked at Sweden, we looked at how the Social Democrats lost the last election, we looked at the rise of the more right-wing uh, moderate party, and we were looking at comparisons uh, with some fear. Our own Social Democratic Party, the Labour Party, is in the same kind of trouble as Persson's uh, party was in. He'd been there a long time, people had got bored with him, perhaps it should have been refreshed with a, a new leader. And the same syndrome has really happened, although we have a new Labour Party leader in the last year. He's somebody who is the Chancellor, has been second in command for the last 11 years. And on the other side, there is the Conservative Party looking very much towards Reinfeldt's uh, techniques for how he won the, uh, the last election and modelling himself very much on, on Reinfeldt. Those of us who are social democrats in Britain have always looked very much at, with envy at the Swedish model. A perfect blend of having strong economy, strong industries, and at the same time a very strong welfare state and a strong sense of social solidarity. Uh, that's not really been the case in Britain in the last hundred years in Britain. Uh, social democracy has been out of power much more than it's been in power. It's very much been a conservative uh, century. So we always look en enviously at uh, the different model in, in Sweden. Uh, we look at <coughs> how it's taken perhaps many decades to build up a public consensus that social democratic ideals are the best way of governing the country. Perhaps we look at Sweden as being one of the most civilized countries in the world. Uh, here our social democratic steps forward are always punctuated with long periods of time when the conservatives are in power, when they tend to roll back the advances that are made. So we look with some nervousness at what Reinfeldt has been doing in, in Sweden and the way our conservatives are uh, imitating him. Our conservatives, for instance, want to bring in the system of private schools being brought into the state education system. They now have a lot of pamphlets and they're talking a lot about this, how anybody will be allowed to set up a school, even if there's no need for a school. Uh, we look at the way in Sweden it tends to be, in most areas, though not everywhere, more the middle class people who gravitate to those schools. And we fear that this will become a way of even more segregating our school system between poorer children and richer children. Um, in Sweden, you know, the tradition compared with us seems to have been a much better integrated education system socially. And here our system tends to be more class divided. So we're very alarmed at the idea of copying anything that might make it worse. In this country, uh, in Britain, David Cameron is copying what Reinfeldt did to win power, pretending to be so close to the Social Democratic Labour Party that there's almost no difference between them. Uh, all the language that he uses, the ideals he express, expresses, his vision of the good society is very, very close to Labour's. It's hard to find differences in what he says, though there are very few practical policies. It's just um, a touchy-feely kind of language that he uses. And he realises that people wouldn't now elect a right-wing government directly. So Cameron is very much our wolf in sheep's clothes in that we know that it's the same old conservative policies underneath, and every time they actually produce a policy, it's quite right-wing. But his language is very emollient, very social democratic, very green, um, in a way to deceive who he really is. And I think he took that from Reinfeldt. He saw that Reinfeldt had pretended to be a social democrat uh, in order to gain office. It's interesting that Reinfeldt is now so very unpopular as it emerges that he's not all he... Uh, pretended to be when he was running for election. 
These days, all the parties, it seems, right across the democratic world, are busy triangulating, trying to minimise the difference between them and confuse the voters. And I think that's very difficult. I think it's very undemocratic. It doesn't give people clear choices. It deceives them about the nature of choices. It tends to make them all promise everything without saying, actually, there are difficult decisions to be made. You know, are you more for the rich or for the poor? Are you more for business or are you more for uh, the average citizen? There really are important policy decisions to be made and voters should be allowed to choose between different ideas, very valid different ideas of the, of the way forward. Instead of which, it's become much more personality politics and all of politicians pretending to be the same thing, particularly the right pretending to be much more centrist than it really is and fooling voters by seeming moderate and uh, humane and uh, concerned about the welfare state but as soon as they get in they cut the welfare state they cut taxes for the richer people not for the poorer people uh, they care less about the uh, social enterprises and the, uh, the schools and the hospitals perhaps than uh, the left the center left would do I don't know how the voter protects themselves better information what it the trouble is what it leads to is voters being very distrustful of all politicians when they're disappointed and disillusioned, they then say, oh, they're all the same. All politicians are the same. They all lie to us. And I think right across uh, the EU, there is now a very deep distrust of all politicians, which is quite toxic, quite dangerous, and possibly in the future lays people open to demagoguery uh, and to da more dangerous and perhaps more right-wing politics and people who seem to tell the truth. I would like to say to the Swedish people that you're very lucky that you have such a long social democratic tradition. It's understandable that once in a while you should punctuate it with a, a dose of reality by bringing in a different government just to have a pause. But then you always revert to being good social democrats. And we hope you're going to do that again this time. It looks in the opinion polls as if you will. The problem in Britain is that we have social democracy for a shortish time. We've had it 11 years, which is a record, an extraordinary record. And then the Conservatives tend to get back in for a very long time and tend to set the long-term agenda and set everything back. Uh, so we put a lot of faith in Sweden. We look to Sweden as our model. Uh, a lot of us would choose to be Swedish if we weren't British. And uh, we envy a kind of civilised uh, respect for one another and an understanding of the value of, of, of communally provided services, an attitude of more care for the citizen. I think since Margaret Thatcher in this country particularly, there has been a ruthless and Americanized streak to our politics, which our Labour government hasn't really been able to resist. Every man for, his, for himself, a kind of rugged Wild West individualism, uh, which is very difficult because it means people are made to feel you don't need to pay your taxes. All the money that the government takes from you is always wasted. Uh, governments are wasteful. Small government is good and big government is bad. Uh, we always look to Scandinavia and say, but look, here's the example of where you can be both economically successful and socially just. Uh, we believe it's possible, but it's difficult to persuade voters in a very Americanized world and we're looking forward to Sweden going back to being the good social democrats we know they are. In, in, in Britain, we find ourselves psychologically halfway across the Atlantic with a very strong pull towards Wild West American political values, rugged individualism, every man for himself, keep the state off your back, pay low taxes, and then a, a more distant Swedish dream at the other end of the spectrum. What we've had with our Labour government has sometimes been dreaming the Swedish dream on more American rates of tax, and that's impossible. There is no such thing as a free lunch. And being able to put the proposition to the voters that you can't be Sweden unless you pay Swedish taxes is quite difficult. But I think people can be made to understand that you get what you pay for, and uh, you can't straddle the Atlantic quite in that way. Mm -hmm.